Welcome to Glad Tidings. We are so thrilled to be able to be here to worship and that you're a part and that you're going to be a part. A part. And so today we're going to be having communion. Later on after worship we're going to be doing communion. So you at home, if you want to go get your communion, whatever it is, and uh, we're going to celebrate the sacrifice of Jesus for us and his great love. So let's uh, open up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just come into your house. We rejoice in your presence. We are so excited that you have chosen us to be your children. Lord, we just love you and, and we're going to celebrate today. We are going to worship you with all of our heart and soul and mind. We're going to take our mind off of all the other issues and problems and focus on you and your great love in your name. Amen. Amen. He's the reason we're here today, isn't he? Our Lord and Savior, will you stand? Let's just worship the Lord. Amen. We love you.
darkness rejoices to so heaven and love. And then Jesus We will 
just let faith arise in your hearts.
for you guys to just begin to step out and come. If you're at home to get your stuff ready, to just begin to step out and to come and uh, just come by, yep, by sections and uh, a little different instead of doing the, with the tree. yep, just file, yeah, exactly. You guys are good. Filing out. We're going to participate in communion, and communion is a celebration of a sacrifice that Jesus made for us and for our life. You know, and we're going to, uh, Sherry's going to lead some worship, but as, as in society right now, we are struggling with all kinds of different things and injustice. I want to tell you that the greatest injustice that ever took place was when a man who was without sin was arrested and mocked and beaten and hung on a cross to die. A man who had no sin, who had done no wrong, hung on a cross, but he willingly did it because he loves you. He took your place. It wasn't right, it wasn't fair, but God said he could be the sacrifice. So that we can be back in right relationship. And, and, and my prayer this Sunday is that you will have a God encounter through communion, through the word, that will impact your life forever. Sherry, just lead us in worship as we're getting our communion. What a wonderful, wonderful Savior who would die. On the cross for me, freely shedding his precious life blood, that the sinner might be made free. And he was nailed to the cross for. sin you've had in your life. His blood covers it all. 
as you pray and ask Jesus to forgive your sins, he forgives all of your sins. That you are in right standing with the Heavenly Father. You have been set free. All of your past has been washed away. And not only has all of your past been washed away, but now he gives you future a hope. He gives you victory over sin. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Partake of the bread. Lord Jesus, I thank you that by your stripes we are healed. And Lord, I pray for those who need a miracle in their body. Lord, I pray for Evelyn, Jesus, that you would reach down and that you would touch her, that you would bring healing to her body. Lord, to the others, that you bring hope and encouragement, Jesus. Lord, I pray for Mackenzie that you would reach down and you would just touch her ankle. Lord, that there be healing that would just take place there. Lord, we run to you. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, you are the one who makes all things well. Thank you. Thank you for your healing power. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Partake of the cup. So he gave his life for others. So he gave his life for others. In redeeming this world from sin. And he's gone to prepare mansion. God is so good, isn't he? Amen. And he loves you. Isn't that amazing? He loves you, period. And so a couple of uh, kind of a housekeeping kind of uh, things is uh, <clears throat> this week, how many of you think, how many of you really like birthdays? How many of you have stopped having them. <laughs> yeah, you're just dreaming. Uh, so this week, June 13th, 
my favorite lady, other than my wife and my kids and stuff, but, you know, my favorite lady who's over 100, can we put it like that? <laughs> totally. She's going to have a birthday, the 13th, June 13th. I don't know all of my grandkids' birthdays, but I know Aunt Hazel's birthday. Her real name is Hazel Young, and that's part of the deal, Hazel Young. Hello, she's eternally young. And uh, so she's in the nursing home. We can't go see her, but they're going to have a celebration on Friday at 10 o'clock. And uh, it's hard to know which one's 110 there, isn't it? <laughs> I love her. You know, just a couple of years ago uh, when we were doing our Thanksgiving thing and I had my cowboy hat, she's like, hey. So I put the cowboy hat on her and got a picture of her with the cowboy hat. Uh, just, and anytime we were there for her birthday last year, we could actually go in and be a part, and she, you know, she's all about Jesus. She's all about Jesus at 110. In fact, her heart is, okay, I'm ready to go. Just take me now. And uh, she's like, Pastor, why doesn't Jesus take me? And I said, well, because I still need you to pray for me and bless the people. Um, I got a little video, we don't have it up here, but uh, of uh, one of the last times I was able to be there, and, and they have these kids come in, these preschoolers come in, and they play, they play balloon volleyball. So, so Aunt Hazel can't see very well, she can't really hear hardly at all, and uh, so you got all these preschoolers, like four or five, somewhere in their range, I don't know what they, but, and they have these balloons. And so they're batting them back and forth. And Aunt Hazel is just, she is ready. And then when she sees that balloon coming, she's just a swat. She's just a swat. I'm like, oh, I want to be like that when I grow up. I want to be like that. And so uh, I encourage you, we've got some, uh, the address, we've got some cards out there that you can pick up. They're out there by Shirley. And uh, Shirley, could you wave? She's not paying attention, okay? <laughs> Hi, Shirley. Everybody wave at Shirley. <laughs> Shirley loves me. Also, by Shirley, we have some daily breads. If you're not sure where to go with your daily devotion, you're struggling on having that daily kind of walk with God thing, we have those out there. They, they have something every day, a scripture, and they have uh, some encouraging words. I encourage you to get those, to take those with you, to uh, put those so that when you get up in the morning, you got to start. Now, you can also, you can download it on your phone. I have it on my phone. And uh, I think it told me today I had, had 110 days in a row. But I have a di different biblical Bible first thing, and it was 200 and some days. So I, I'm pretty proud of my humility. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a goal kind of person. I'm a kind of like, okay, when I was at 99, I'm like, oh, dude, I cannot forget tomorrow. So you, you develop a routine that keeps you in tune with God, that routine. So uh, I want to look at Revelation chapter 2, Revelation chapter 2, verse 10, and uh, the title of our sermon this morning is uh, Found Faithful, Found Faithful, and uh, to look at that, Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. The word says, be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Jesus, we just come. We thank you that you are faithful. You are faithful. You are faithful to fulfill the call and mission of your heavenly Father. Lord, we just love you. We thank you, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Does anybody know what time it is? You know, in fact, there used to be a song like that. Does anybody really know what time it is? Some of you are not old enough to know that. Does anybody, you know, this past week, we had a, a thing take place that uh, in my wife's office, there's a trundle bed, and she's had all these pictures. She's going through all the pictures. I was young once. Just, there's a couple pictures, black and white kind of thing, you know. And uh, as she's going through it and moving it out, she came across Levi's watch. 
she came across Levi's watch, and I want to see if I can get this right in, and she's, so, when we talked to them, they're in, they're in India, and uh, they had just this previous week talked about Levi's watch, and where in the move, I, you know, when you move to India, stuff gets lost. Yeah. Have, you, have you ever moved, period, and you're like, oh, I wonder where that went, or where that went, or... Some of you have never even moved and you still can't find your stuff. Where is the watch? And, they're, they're, and they were like, oh, we don't know. In fact, my son lost his billfold over in India. I'm not sure if he found it yet. I, I, we're just praying, God, he's a lot like his father. And poor Levi, there's no hope for him. So we found his watch. So Sherry found his watch, and she looked at it, and it's still keeping time. The time, well, okay, we switched to daylight savings, but if we weren't on daylight savings, it would be right on. It was still keeping time. And so she, her statement was, was oh, look, here's Levi's watch. And, and still with the right time, just doing what it was meant to do Till someone found it. Just doing what it was meant to do until someone found it. You know, I want to talk this morning about being found faithful. Being found faithful. You know, I want to, I guess could retitle it, Lessons from a Little Boy's Watch. Lessons from a Little Boy's Watch. You know, it's amazing that the, where, where your uh, wisdom can come from. And I want to talk about being faithful, but I want to talk about, first of all, number one, have you ever been misplaced or lost? Now, I just thank God for my phone <laughs> and GPS. And that I can enter into my phone, it will tell me where I am and where I'm going. Because sometimes we get misplaced. Someone asked Daniel Boone one time if he's ever lost. You know, he's one of the great explorers in the early uh, days of America. And he says, no, I've never been lost. I I've been misplaced a few times. <laughs> but I've never been lost. You know, uh, at one point, my daughter... She was coming back from California, and she said, Dad, can you tell me how to get to the right spot? Because she, uh, she, she actually, she said, when does Interstate 70 run into Interstate 80? And I said, well, never. <laughs> never. It never does. Well, she's like, well, can you tell me how to? And I said, I can't tell you how to get there until I find out where you're at. Figure out where you're at. So, for us to figure out where we're at, Jesus comes and the Holy Spirit helps us know where we're at. He helps us with that starting point. You know, it's interesting too because as a minister, as I prepare sermons, the first part of the sermon is to connect with you, to, to help reach you right where you're at. So, I hate to give all this stuff away. You guys will end up going off and being ministers. You won't even come anymore. You don't know how it works. My goal is to connect with you at some level and then help you to move from where you're at to closer to Jesus. To closer to Jesus. To introduce you to Jesus in a greater way. To not miss any opportunity to talk about Jesus and his love and the fact, you know, in fact, uh, I watched a funeral this past week and, uh, and, and how everything went and it was all good and well except for my principles in, in, in doing funerals is, is I want to talk about the person, I want to celebrate their life, but I also want to tell people about Jesus. Because at funerals is when people start to think about eternity. 
of a young man that I talked to a couple weeks ago whose brother passed away who said, I'm starting to think about eternity. I've never thought about it. I've never thought anything beyond this life right here. But now, after the passing of my brother, I'm starting to think about life after death. And trying to figure it out. And we, guys, have the answers. We have the word of God. We have that foundation that points them to Jesus. Because he is the way, the truth, and the life. There's a lot of people who are confused about eternity and how that's all going to work. But the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die and then to judgment. To stand before God. He talks about the sheep and the uh, goats and how the... The sheep, he'll say, enter in. Well done. And to the goats, he'll say, sorry, depart from me. That there re the reality is there is a heaven to win and a hell to avoid. And we talked about that a few weeks ago, how that uh, the reasons I choose to follow God is, right, I, I didn't want to go to hell. And also, it just, I want to see the loved ones who've gone ahead and yes. number three, but mostly to see Jesus. Yes. To see Jesus. So, so at some point, we have an encounter with Jesus, whether it's at a funeral or wherever. And, and see, the other thing is, not just talk about Jesus. Because I remember we, uh, I went on a fishing trip with guys uh, to Canada when we used to pastor in uh, Council Bluffs, and so there, and and it was a, uh, it was an outreach. Sure it was. There was a bunch of guys at church who wanted to go fishing in Canada, and they said, hey, we can call it an outreach if we invite people who don't go to church who maybe aren't saved. So then we, you know, tax right out. I mean, it's a wonderful thing. I mean, you can tell your wife, honey, I'm doing ministry. And, she, and they're like, yeah, no, yeah, no. And so we got up there, and I remember as we sat in the church, and I, and I remember the one guy had brought his son who wasn't saved. And we talked about Jesus, but he, we never gave him an opportunity to accept Jesus. It's like, it's like pastors who preach about Jesus and how we're, we're lost and we need Jesus to forgive our sins, but we never tell you how to do it. I've been to so many funerals and it breaks my heart where the pastor shares a great story, the message about Jesus and how your sins can be forgiven, but he never tells you. Here's what you got to do. So you leave thinking, wow, that's great. But you don't know the steps to take. See, some of us are not that bright. <laughs> Thank you, Barb. She's back. <laughs> I meet her, love her. So, yeah. Oh, I thought there'd be at least one amen, not just a laugh. How many of you can say, I'm not that bright? Yeah. Not that bright. You know, I. I I, I got a power washer out of the uh, out of the box. Got a, we got a new power washer a little while back, and I finally got it out of the box. And uh, I looked at it, and I, I read the directions, and I said, "I better YouTube this, so I can watch somebody else walk through the process, so I could get it right, so I could get it right." You know, and it was interesting because the guy in the video said, hey, here's, here's the problem for a lot of people is, so the, 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 it's a gas motor, and before they ship it, they run it, and then they drain the oil, and then they drain the oil. Now, there is a little package of oil in the thing, 16 fluid ounces. But the guy in the video who works on him said, here's the deal though. People look at it, and there's a little dipstick thing. You unscrew it and you pull it out. And because there once was oil in there, you pull it out and it's like, oh, there's oil on the dipstick. So they don't add the oil. And it blows it up. Doesn't run without oil. It's pretty important. So, I'm watching the video because I want to get it right because even though I got a huge discount at Menards on this, <laughs> I don't want to destroy, I don't want to just waste my money. I want to get it right. So I'm trying to follow the directions. 
How much more important is eternity? That we get it right. That we actually follow God and obedient to what he asked us to do. So, I'm going to circle back around to where we're heading here, though, initially. <laughs> I love you guys. You've been lost, so you, you got right with Jesus, and you begin to serve him. You begin to serve him, and you begin to do what he has called you to do. What is the purpose of a watch? See, I've got a watch right here that I, that I bought myself for Mother's Day one year. <laughs> I know. It was, I was... I was at my nephew's wedding, and there was a young man there who worked for Garmin. And my nephew said, if he could buy a watch for you at like half price. And I'm like, sweet. And then somebody mentioned, well, it is Mother's Day. So I thought, well, I, I've got to do it now. <laughs> and so I have this watch. It will tell you how many steps you took. It will tell you how fast you went. It, it will talk to my watch, which you're actually watching on, and, and tell me all these different things. My heart rate, it will tell me how much stress I'm under. I'm thinking it's shooting right through the roof right now. Stress. It, it keeps, somehow it figures all that stuff out. But is, did I buy it? Because I want to watch to tell me what time it is. That's the basic premise. That's why Levi got this watch, so he'd know what time it was. So, we have a purpose. We start off on the walk. Sometimes we feel like we get misplaced. We feel like no one is paying attention to you. We begin to do our walk with God, and maybe as a parent, as a wife, as a husband, as an employee, you feel like you are underappreciated, that nobody cares or sees what you're doing. Guys, how many of you understand there's this magic basket at your house? Do you guys have that same one? You put it in there, and somehow your clothes come out clean and folded. It's magic. And you're like, so those of you who are on your own, you're like, no, no, there's nothing magic there. <laughs> there is a faithful spouse who does unappreciated stuff always. It's not always appreciated. So, and I know this is kind of stereotypical kind of thing, but it, it tends to be to fit along this way. It seems like more women are doing laundry than men because you men goof it up and the ladies say, don't touch it ever again. Yeah, there you go, get the kids to do it. Uh, but that process of uh, just being faithful, being faithful. Are you being faithful to what you were created to do? You know, it's, there's a whole lot of people who get no recognition. Yesterday we, we celebrated D-Day. D-Day. For thousands of young men who we don't know their name. We don't, their families knew who they were. We don't know their names. They're buried over there in France. Who, who were a part of a bigger <laughs> thing and they were just faithful. They were faithful to get out of that boat, to go through that water and cross that sand, many of them giving their lives because they were convinced this was the right thing to do. And they were faithful to follow the orders they were given, to go forward, to do battle, to give their lives. And you know, there's always, you, 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 there's always a few names that you know, a few heroes, a few people uh, that, that, that stand out. I, I watched Sergeant York the other day. That's a great show. Most of you don't. Yep, I, 
can tell you, you don't have any idea. <laughs> <laughs> Scripture says, do not be weary in well-doing, for you will reap in due season. Folks, some of you, and, and it doesn't matter who you are, what your, what your position, sometimes you are just weary. You have been doing the right thing. Thing. You have been doing what you've been called to do, but you haven't seen maybe the results that you want. You haven't seen, you haven't gotten the appreciation, the notice. Here's the bottom line. Are you being faithful? Are you being faithful? That's what, God doesn't call us to be super talented. He simply says, will you be faithful in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. It says, Let a man consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mystery of God. Moreover, moreover it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. 2 Chronicles 16, 9 says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro through the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal or faithful to him. God is looking to bless faithful people who are, you guys are, I'm preaching to the choir today, aren't I? You're the faithful ones who show up for church, who show up to, to work, to read, to live for God, to do the task. And sometimes, sometimes the pastor doesn't even shake your hand. Oh, so offended. So offended. No. You say, yeah, that's not what I'm here. I'm here to bless other people. I'm not worried about how much blessing I get. I want to bless other people. I want to be found faithful. I want to be found faithful and not just for a while. But Revelation 2.10 says, be faithful unto death. I am not going to stop. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to, I'm going to be faithful to what God has called me to do. I'm going to be faithful to my walk with God. I'm going to be faithful to my spouse. I'm going to be faithful to, to my church. I'm going to be faithful to do the things that God has asked me to do. I'm not going to get distracted and lose my focus. Because sometimes being faithful is not very exciting. And there's no recognition. Nobody even knows. It's, it was interesting as I was reading the Old Testament this past week. I was reading about Elijah and and Elijah was having a bad day. And uh, he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenants, tore down your altars, killed your prophets with the sword. I'm alone left. And they're trying to kill me. He was having a bad He was having one of those days. And he honestly didn't know. He thought he was the only one left who was living for God. And God but God says, Listen, in verse 18, Yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel whose knees have not bowed to Baal and every mouth that has not kissed him. He said there are 7,000 people still out there. We never know their names. We never know who they were. We never know exactly where they live. We just know that God knew there was 7,000 people who were still living for him and loving him and, and faithful to him. God saw them. God sees right where you're at. Sometimes you feel like you're stuck in the, in the things. You know, none of us knew where this watch was. Actually, this is right on time. It says 1129. I'm going to compare my high dollar watch to the, my grandson's watch. I want to make sure we get the right watch in the mail when we mail it to him in India. It's going to be a couple more years. Sometimes it's not very exciting to be faithful. But it's the right thing. Being faithful at your job. Showing up. Being faithful. At the commitments that you make. Being faithful. And sometimes when you feel like maybe you're lost, that nobody knows, that nobody cares, God knows, and he's keeping track. Amen. Do not be weary in well-doing, but you will 
reap a reward in due season. And some of you, you know, uh, the farmer next to us planted corn and it's popping up. And about September, early October, he's going to reap the reward. Some of you are planting oak. You might not ever get to reap the rewards, but your children will. I'm just telling you, I'm reaping re rewards from my grandfather. So funny, I thought about bringing it. Yeah, I got it. I have his pocket watch. It, however, did quit working. So, <laughs> blessed by the heritage there. Blessed by the heritage of my father. Blessed by the heritage of my in-laws. They're Anniversary. How many years have they been married? 53? 63. They've been married longer than everybody but Anne Hazel has been alive. <laughs> there are anniversaries this weekend. Faithful. Through ups and downs and trials and battles. Faithful. To be found faithful. What are you going to get? The reward of life. Let's bow our heads this morning. You know, as you look at the, the watch, you say, oh, it's this time. It's that time. It's lunchtime. It's... You know what the Bible says? It doesn't say the minutes, but it says today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to make a choice. You know, we talked about Jesus and we talked about in communion how he gave his life and he sacrificed. He who was without sin became sin for us and took our place and took our punishment. And this morning, I talked about how sad it is that we don't give people an opportunity to take that step. They have the knowledge, but they haven't taken the step. This morning, if you have not asked Jesus Christ to forgive your sins and change your eternal destiny, I just invite you to slip up your hand and say, Pastor, that's me. I want to ask Jesus Christ to forgive my sins. I want to ask him to forgive my sins and change my life. He loves you. He loves you so much. wants to take that load of sin and guilt and shame off and replace it with the perfect peace that passes all understanding. Jesus. Jesus, we just write to you this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you. The way you do it, if you're at home, is you simply pray and say, Jesus, I'm sorry for my sin. I need you to forgive my sins and change my heart and change my thinking. Jesus, I want to draw close to you. I want to accept your gift and I want to begin to live my life to bring glory and honor to you. I want to be found faithful to finish what I plan. Thank you. This morning, yeah, look up. It's kind of warm in here, and I know. I'm sweating. We turned the heat up today. I was going to preach on hell. <laughs> no? <laughs> we have an air conditioning issue. And I know, it's a little tougher when you're warm. It's a little tougher to stay awake, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you for being faithful. As a pastor, I want to thank you. You people who are who are just pillars, you have been faithful. And that there is a reward. There is a reward for you in heaven. You don't always get noticed. You don't always get thanked. You don't always get appreciated. But God's keeping track. Being found faithful. Not talented, not good looking. Just faithful. Just faithful. So there's hope for some of us, right, James? Thank you. 
James, James switched sides, so I wouldn't be able to get him, but no. Anyway. Let's stand this morning. If you came in this morning, you're struggling, you had a lot of issues and stuff, I just want you to know Jesus loves you, and that to, to just ask him for his perfect peace to just flood through. Breathe out and let that bad stuff go. Breathe in the love of Jesus. Say, you know what? It's going to be okay. I, I can do it one more week. I can, I, I'm going to be faithful. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to be faithful. And to know that nothing is forever. Life is a season. He moves us through our season. Let me pray for you as we close. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you. I thank you for your great love and for your mercy. Jesus, you are so faithful. When we are unfaithful, you are still faithful because that is your nature. Jesus, we just love you. We want to serve you. We want to follow you. We want to walk with you. Lord, I pray for each one who is here today. Jesus, that your Holy Spirit would lead and guide, that you would protect them. Lord, that your presence would surround them. Jesus, we just love you. We love you. We want to serve you. Thank you for your great love and your name.